What's going on? Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bite for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. Now, lots of action this week after John Pekskowski's BuzzFeed report claims Apple's fall event will happen on September the 9th and will feature not only new iPhones, but new iPads and the new Apple TV. Now, that's a whole lot of Apple, so what are we hearing about each of these products right now? Well, the iPhone 6S is expected to bring force touch to iPhones for the first time, and a 9 to 5 Mac report says it will be used for shortcuts or faster actions and not a new screen for more button options like the Apple Watch with its smaller screen. Now, according to their sources, it's known internally as Orb, and an example of a shortcut action would be force touching on a map destination and immediately launching turn by turn directions or even force touching directly on a home screen icon like, let's say, the phone app, and you can take you directly to voicemail. Now, Force Touch looks to be a nice touch, but I don't expect Apple will be using this as a big time selling point for the success. Now, there's a lot of back and forth on whether or not we'll see an iPhone 6C, but recent developer logs from Fixu has revealed two new iPhones in its web traffic logs over July labeled iPhone 8.1 and iPhone 8.2. Now, the first iPhone 5C was labeled 7.3, but there's no phone with the number 83 that is shown on their logs with the majority of hits coming from the United States. So really, all we know is this is what's being tested right now. So uh, maybe the 6C could still live on. Now you all remember the video that confirmed Ben Gate for last year's iPhone 6 from Unbox Therapy. Well, this time around with an alleged iPhone 6S case in hand, Lou measured it out and confirms the new backplate is slightly taller, wider, and thicker, but actually lighter in weight, supporting Apple using their new 7000 series aluminum used in the Apple Watch. Now, the areas around the volume and power buttons, really the weak points on the 6 Plus, are now thicker as well, measuring out to 1.9 millimeters compared to the previous 1.14 millimeters. And after all this, there was no attempt to bend this case, so, you know, just milk it out to make another video in a few weeks. All right, in iPad news, developer Hamza Sud has discovered in the resource files of El Capitan that a split screen view exists in Safari for the iPad Mini. Now, currently, only the iPad Air 2 supports this feature in the developer's release, but the expected faster processor and this new evidence shows the iPad Mini could be getting the same feature set. Also, EvLeaks has been a reliable source in the past and released what's believed to be the dimensions for the new iPad Mini 4, measuring in at only 6.1 millimeters thick with a similar look and feel to the iPad Air 2's design. Now, the current iPad Mini 3 is 7.5 millimeters thick, and you all know I'm thirsty for the iPad Pro, so we'll just wait to find out all the iPad details in September. As for the Apple TV, we haven't heard much for a while, but in an interview with Jimmy Iovine in Wired, Iovine talks about the prospect of applying music curation to the television. He says discovering content on the TV is technically good, but the curation of content for the TV is still not that great. Now, the Apple TV is still expected to bring a brand new set-top box, a new touch remote and Siri capabilities, as well as an app store and more content with the recent signings of local TV stations, but a better curation system could be part of the mix as well. Now, he also acknowledged in the interview that Apple Music's Connect needs a lot of work to make it a better platform for artists and fans, and like I said from day one, it's not very compelling at all. Also, a while ago, you might remember that CVS and Rite Aid decided to make the move to block Apple Pay because they were part of a group supporting another form of e-payment called Currency, which now may or may not be launching in 2016. So what did they decide to do? Well, Rite Aid will now turn back on support for Apple Pay, also Google Wallet and Android Pay, at almost 4,600 locations after they realized how stupid they were, while CVS will continue to hold out for Currency if it arrives by 2016. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. You can always email me at theapplebyte at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong, and we'll answer when we can. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time for another bite of the apple.